to order um, the district advisory committee meeting for North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District for November 8th, 2023. Then we have a gavel, Jessica. Um, so before we get started, uh, actually first we'll start with approval of the DAC meeting summary from September 13th, 2023. Do we have any, uh, first of all, do we have any changes? Is there anything in there that needs to be my computer just died, so it doesn't matter. Anything that needs to be um, corrected? Do I have a motion to approve? I can't. You can't. Oh, that's right. You're not here. Do you have a motion to approve the minutes from uh, September 13, 2023? I move to approve the minutes as okay. written. Do you have a second? I have a second that. Okay. Uh, meeting minutes for September 13th, 2023 are approved. Uh, we have a, um, a discussion agenda, but before we get started with that, um, there have been some changes to the district that we are going to talk about. Um, I, I will move the agenda around a little bit um, so that we can have time to talk about those changes. <clears throat> but before I get started, I want to um, acknowledge our staff and the amazing job you all do. Uh, we, and I'm gonna talk collectively here, I feel that we all appreciate the work you're going, you're, you do. We appreciate everything that you do for the district. We are all district members. And I, I personally want you to know that we are here to support you and make sure that we continue to move the department or the district forward in a positive manner. Um, so that's my little pulpit for the beginning here. And then I'd like to go into our uh, discussion agenda. Um, uh, I apologize, Jeff. We're going to move one item ahead. Um, and I, I'm glad you're here because you might be able to answer any, a few questions, maybe not. Um, so I'd like to go to status updates, uh, have the Concord School. Um, I'm just gonna highlight a few and then we'll go back to the rest later. Um, the Concord School, um, Jennings Lodge, uh, and then we'd like to hear about uh, the director position and then also talk, uh, hear about the system plan. Is that all right with you? That's, that sounds great. And uh, this is a perfect time for the DAC meeting because in regards to Concord, we have some updates that we just received today. Um, so what I'm going to do is ask the expert. I'm, I, I'm uh, one of the team members on the Concord project, but the expert is happens to be with us today. Uh, she's presented before and can give you guys, um, I'll just call it the good news. I'll let her deliver the good news. So I, I did forget one thing. Um, we need to do a roll call. Oh, no. <laughs> oh sorry. Um, let's just go around and say who's here. Um, uh, Zoom people, sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, Zoom people, would you like to just say, acknowledge that you're here? Lisa? Yeah, Lisa Beatty, City of Milwaukee. I uh, was, I, I always prefer to come in person, but I was uh, exposed to COVID yesterday, so I'm staying home, uh, but happy to participate. Jeanette? Hi, uh, Jeanette DeCastro. I'm a DAC member from Sub Area 3. Um, my pronouns are she and they, and I am getting over a cold, so I will not bring that tonight. Thank you. Thank you both so very much for your attendance <laughs> online. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, Maureen Tom. Hi, I'm Maureen, some Area 4 representative. Grover Bornfeld. I'm Grover Bornfeld, I'm a representative from Sub Area 1. Thank you, Grover. You, Siri? Siri, you know, Sub Area 1. Joel. Uh, Joel Bergman, uh, representing the community centers. Okay, Mark. And Mark Elliott, uh, Sub Area 2. Katie Scott, Vice Chair of this Committee and Representative for Sub-Area 3. And Ryan C., uh, Chair in Sub-Area 2. And I think uh, that's the whole roll call. Sorry, I did it kind of uh, like different. We're mixing it up. Okay. All right. He's Alex. Concord. Hi, everybody. Alex Gilbertson, Planner with NPPRD. I wanted to just give a little update that we received uh, at three o'clock today. Um, there was an appeal that was happening on Concord property project um, regarding a street extension from the project boundary up to Oakfield Road along Southeast Concord. 
Um, and the hearings officer today uh, ruled against the appeal. Um, they have sided basically with the county planning staff. And so um, at this point, we are anticipating beginning construction at the beginning of December. Um, the reason for the couple week delay is that we have to receive a land use compatibility statement from planning now that the hearings officer decision has been made. We have to get that LUX form signed from planning, and then we have to send it to DEQ because um, they need to issue us our 1200C um, grading permit, essentially, to begin grading. And so uh, we're allowing a couple weeks for that to happen. Um, but um, as far as I know, today, this afternoon, we're looking at the beginning of December for uh, breaking ground. You want to talk to Jenny's Lodge while you're up here? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions about Concord? Okay. Um, oh, yes. Okay. I just wanted so we talked about breaking ground, and that would be both for the library and the park, or and, yes. and the parking lot. All of those things are all of the things right. in the project. Yes. Um, and then for Jennings Lodge, we had a our first community event gathering at the end of September at the school. It was a lovely event. Um, it was held outside in the covered shelter area. And we had, um, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but in your packet is a, a summary to give you the numbers of all the people that attended both the in-person event and the online um, survey event as well. And um, right now we're um, trying to figure out collecting all of that information from what we heard from the community and distilling it down into two different conceptual um, plans. And we're planning a second community event to be held in the gymnasium at the school, um, looking at the 18th of January. So after the holiday season, stay tuned for more information on that, but um, we're getting close to having some plans that we can invite the community to help um, tell us, did we hear you right? Um, are you excited about this? What don't you like, et cetera. Um, so yeah, moving forward with that, we had a, a pre-application conference with the county on Tuesday of this week. And so taking into account everything that we're hearing from the community, also having to uh, apply the requirements that we'll need for you know future um, development. Um, as well. So multi-layered process. Any Thanks. questions about Jennings Lodge? Yes. Yes. Uh, I actually thank you for that. And I'm thrilled to hear that. And I was great, I was grateful to get to read the report and all the comments, etc. I have a couple of questions about uh, the focus. Uh, in the beginning, up until a few months ago, it was being called a neighborhood park, and that has fallen out of all of the verbiage. That's piece one. And then two, it seems as though there's a focus on the school, whereas that is no longer school. It is a four fee uh, pre, uh, childhood education center. And so there are no, it's not a resident kind of process. It's, it is a neighborhood park, if mm -hmm. I understand correctly, is a quarter mile or half mile. That's the main target and everybody's welcome. So I'm concerned about the focus being as much attention on the teachers and this, the invitations was to the families of the kids who attend there. And that's a very small part of the population compared to the people who uh, uh, sorely are looking forward to that being a park. So is there a reason that that shifted? Has it actually shifted? Is it hasn't shifted. I appreciate that comment. Um, this is the way we're looking at it. It's a district-wide amenity. Mm -hmm. um, so even though it is a neighborhood park that will be servicing a lot of the immediate and adjacent neighbors, mm -hmm. we're putting a reach out to the larger district sure. as far as the engagement goes. And so um, when we mailed out postcards, we expanded our boundary so to catch a, a larger group of um, residents as well. And so also capturing the, the people that come to the school to drop their kids off, participate, the teachers, et cetera. And so we're really looking at a broader range of um, input. Okay. Yeah. Right. So is it losing the title of being a 
neighborhood park? No. Okay, good. No. So that'll be started more because I mean that's a nationally defined. We're just um, at this point the the naming and is um, Jennings Park at the Jennings Lodge campus is sort of how we're framing right. it. Well, that's a sensitive subject as well. We don't want to name it because the people in Jennings Lodge do not want that to be called Jennings because they had other things in mind and that was the same thing. So we need to figure out what the people in the district want to name it yeah. as, as piece one. So okay. I'm cautious about, so it's a park at Jennings Lodge Correct. School yeah. or something like that. That's great. Lastly, uh, are we going to get, because I noticed on the list of things for uh, status updates, can the Jennings Lodge uh, be added to that list? Uh, can we, yeah, let's, can we add that to the rolling list of updates? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And because I'm interested in report, because there's been a number of meetings oh, yeah. with the direct, I mean, with the consultants, et cetera, and I'd like to have us be kept in the rest of that, plus the county commissioners, if they choose their board directors, and then also the CPO, which is an architect. That sounds good. Thank you very much. Uh, and I, I invite uh, any of the DAC members to, if there is a project that is um, happening or in the process of happening, if you want to add it to the rolling agenda, um, just for updates, you know, let's go ahead and ask. Yeah, and, and I think that's can, a great addition. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, for Alex for Jennings Lodge? Sounds good. Thank you, Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much, Thank Alex. Um, and then I was going to go to hold on just a second. Uh, should we do system play first? Sure. Okay, and then we can hit the last one, which is going to be the bigger so uh, system plan. I can give you guys an update. Uh, everything I know. So system plan right now is set to go uh, to the policy session uh, on the twenty first of this month. Um, so all are invited um, to that. What I can tell you is that we have brought on a new planner that has taken that project under her wing. Um, she is going to work with me and, and providing as much update as we can with the board directors at that time. We want them to know what's included, why it is, the scope of it, because um, our intent overall is to let the community dictate what we do in the future. Uh, the needs of the community will drive the plans of NCPRD. So ultimately, if you, if you boil it down to the purpose for the system plan, it'll set us up for going forward. It also gives us a playbook to say um, the community would like <laughs> You know, project A. Okay, let's put together a plan and 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 a cost to it to see you know where it ranks on the priority. So we have a we have a great plan in place. We've actually chosen um, uh, a company to go out and do a lot of the expertise work as far as uh, community engagement and helping us put together that plan. I would say Ryan was part of the interview team. I don't know if you remember quite a few months ago. I think DHP appointed a member to to participate in that process. So uh, it was a it was a very difficult process because we had three great candidates. So mm -hmm. we, we could not lose. And um, I will have an update for the next DAC meeting, depending on whatever the policy session on the 21st uh, indicates. So um, I'd like, thank you very much. I'd like to open this up to questions. I have several questions, but I'd like to let the, have the rest of the DAC have an opportunity to ask questions. Um, does anybody want any topic or no, no, on, on the system, <laughs> on the system, uh, Mark, go ahead. Uh, well, thank you, Dominic. Mm -hmm. And also wanted to thank you guys for, for all the work you're doing too. I see it in a lot of places throughout the city and at the community center. So always grateful for your staff, which you guys do every day. <clears throat> um, well, first I wanted to ask is if there's any idea when the the actual contract will go to the BCC for signature authorization. So I, the 21st is the date that we will know the future of it. So um, I don't, the, the only date I have is, is December 21st at policies where we'll be able to then, okay. actually we'll be able to present, the board will then decide uh, the next steps on when to. Okay. Yeah, so we're at the mercy of, uh, of, the, of the BCC. And is that going to be on the agenda for the, um, and see the board when they need to have an applicant. So um, I just met this afternoon with Gary. We haven't started putting together the board, uh, the NCPRD agenda yet. But if that's if that's what they would like on the 
agenda for that December meeting, it'll be on there. So um, I think it's a great topic. I mean, it's 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 at the forefront of on a lot of people's minds. So my job is to make sure that it, that uh, you know we're giving the community what they want, and that's what drives us moving forward. So. Okay. And so you're going to be making a presentation on the 21st, 21st and then there's yeah. going to be conversation discussion during that policy meeting. Yeah. The policy, I don't believe there is. The session is November 20th. Oh, November, excuse November. November. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. And it's no, no, so it's just, it's just, it'll just be myself and then I'll have a, a staff member up there with me uh, presenting and answering questions. On that. Are you familiar with any issues that are coming up that could curtail how this thing is moving forward? I, I know there's questions about how we got from, I guess you could say, the, to the initial start to, to choosing and then uh, where it's going before the board of directors. So that will be uh, up to myself and, and my cohort to kind of help maneuver the board through that and then place the decision before them, uh, you know, whether it proceeds right then or we need to take a pause and, and fill in the blanks and answer more of their questions. I feel confident that we did uh, our due diligence okay. in picking the right people, uh, confident they can give us the results that we want. Do you uh, happen to know what many times in a proposal is there is a sunset date? There's a date at which this proposal is no longer valid. So I happen to know what that is. So I actually had that conversation today. Uh, mm -hmm. I do not know if there's one in this, but I did speak with uh, my, my boss today and said, you know, if this doesn't move forward, we need to engage through procurement uh, because the organization we picked uh, thought that they would already be in the process of, of working this plan already. So um, that's one of the questions that I'll, I'll work on finding out if there was a, a drop dead date or I hope we don't have to start the process over yeah. because I respect their business and, and we were on their calendar and they have other clients also. So right. that's something that I'll work on finding out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we'll go Katie, then I, I'm sorry, Lisa and, and Jeanette, I didn't know who put their hand up first, but I'll just go alphabetical. Sorry, Lisa. I'm wondering if you're able to speak at all to, it sounds like when we initially talked about this, we were anticipating that this consultant work would be really starting in the fall and it seems like there's been a delay. So I would like to know um, what is the reason for that delay and why hasn't this work already been started? So I'm coming into some of these questions a little late. So um, I'll, I'll be transparent. What I know is that we, we were at the point where we had chose a company to yeah. kind of execute this system plan. We were going before the board of directors and they had some questions that they, I think, wanted to pause on until we could we could make them feel comfortable moving forward. So um, there are specific issues. Um, I couldn't go into detail because I haven't heard those. Uh, I, I, so those are things that myself and staff are going to prep for for that meeting on the 21st that we can answer any and all their questions. There's a lot of details once you get into one of these system plans that you know, as far as scope and, and who's responsible for what, the number of community engagement events, all those things that I think might be some of the questions that some of the board might have. So we want to get as much information to them so they can uh, make an informed decision. Do you have any other questions? Um, I would, you know, I know you're not able to answer this, of course, but as representatives of our community, you know, we would anticipate that um, there be some questions asked of the community, especially knowing that the systems plan is very important to our residents to move forward with any of these projects. So I would hope that the board would understand that this is very meaningful to the people who live in this district, and we would like to see this go forward um, without any further delays. But thank you, Dominic. And we will do our best to echo that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Jeanette. Oh, thank you. Um, so my question was very similar. Is it, is it getting feedback? Oh, we don't no. No, we're good. No. Okay, Are great. You... Sorry about that. Um, so thank you for answering that. My next question was, um, the board of commissioners and our board of directors have a really full plate. Is there anything that we can do on the DAC side um, to answer some of those questions or help staff um, uh, uh, to keep it moving forward. Just just echoing that it's really, we've, we know that the existing system and system plan and capital plans, right, they're very out of date. Um, and so um, I think that anything we can do to keep it moving forward, I feel like we'd be happy to help if we're able to. 
I appreciate the offer. And, and if we come up with something that we believe the DAC can help us uh, kind of propel this uh, to get it passed, uh, we'll definitely, I'll reach out to Ryan and then he can disseminate that information out. So um, I don't know specifically what they're looking for. And that's why um, I'm going to kind of work with Gary, the, the, the county administrator to say, hey, tell me what we need to have at this meeting on the 21st so we can make everybody more comfortable moving forward and, and not delaying this. So um, that's going to be my goal and my job. Uh, Lisa? Uh, I took my hand down because I had the exact same question. So I think it's been covered. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody? Oh, Grover. Yes, thanks. Yeah. I'm curious as to, and not everybody in this room can answer the question, but why it's a policy session? Because that means there's no opportunity for comment from, and I love the way it was couched. It is, we need to know what the community thinks, what the community wants. Thank you very much for saying it that way, Dominic, because it is important. But I also want to point out 83,000 83, of the people live in Unincorporated. 23,000 live in Milwaukee, and 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 no one ever talks about because I've read the minutes and I also read the Jennings Lodge report and the number of comments about why are we holding up Milwaukee Bay and this is wrong and and what's not being said is Milwaukee is currently appealing the decision to leave the district. So I want to bring us all back to 2014 when that master plan never was approved because Happy Valley was in the process of leaving the district. And we spent all that money. We did all that planning. We never could use that master plan. So here we sit with Milwaukee still suing to leave the district, still be behind in their agreements about master plans. I mean, uh, IGA, master IGA agreements being updated, et cetera, for years now. So I don't know how we can spend money without any clarity about our future. Are we planning for the whole district or the district without Milwaukee? And that, I was involved in all that stuff around Happy Valley. It really did just grind us to a stop. So I don't want that to go unsaid. I don't have an answer, but I'm concerned that it's a policy session and not a place where people can speak. And how will we find out what the community thinks, which is what you asked for? So, no, that's a great one. I can tell you in our um, scope that we put out, uh, we knew that the question was going to come up about Milwaukee in or out. So part of the language in that would be for this organization to provide almost a 1A and 1B scenario. This would be it with them in, this would be it with them out. It also provides us the luxury of not having to wait for that decision. We can move forward um, and whatnot. You know, the question, the, the reality is Milwaukee's still in the district as of today. They're paying taxes like everybody else. So um, it's 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 something that I can't go back and talk about 2014 because in 2014, you know, I still had hair on the top of my head. So, <laughs> uh, but what I can tell you is going forward, the system plan is so important for NCPRD because that's our playbook. That's what we're going to do. Um, along with the, that's what the community is going to tell us they want us to do. And it's our job to execute that to the best of our ability. So I understand the urgency. I also understand the concern and frustration because you and I have talked, you, you, you have, if I need history, I, I, I know I can call you up and you can give it to me. So, um, but, but our goal ultimately is to get this system plan approved so that everybody's comfortable and let the, let us do the work of whatever the results come out of it. So. Um, I'm, uh, Lisa, I'll give you a, a second. I'm going to have you, Siri, go first. Oh, no, uh, I'll have Lisa go first. Okay, directly but before, before oh, okay. Lisa, you go, I just, I want to remind us, we are one district. So I want us to be really careful. You choose how you want to say what you want to say, but um, the rhetoric is really important. We are one district. We are still one district. There's been no decisions made. I'm actually really curious to, to hear from Milwaukee down the road on the actual information of the process that they've gone through um, and get the real details on that because I feel there's a lot of misinformation. And um, over the next few months, I'm going to work with various uh, groups to have presentations so that we actually have the real information because I think there's a lot of um, politicking going on and misinformation and I am not a person that enjoys that at all mm -hmm. and I will cut through that really quick 
So um, I just want us to put everybody on notice that we will be getting actual information from the actual people and not from others. So uh, with that, Lisa, apologize. Um, that's a very impassioned thing for me. You know, I have very little patience for that. So uh, please feel free to. Uh, uh, well, I, ap I appreciate what you just said. And I appreciate what Dominic said. Milwaukee is one fifth of the district. And I think it's very smart that they've, they've uh, set this up so that the master, the system planning can go forward. Um, you know, Milwaukee needs system planning too. Um, whether we stay or go, I the one piece I of of misinformation I will take a minute here to correct without trying to cor correct all the much information misinformation out there is the city is not suing the district. Um, it gets put that way in the paper and other places that the city is suing NCPRD. The city went into court to ask the court. It's called a validation action to ask the court what's the answer to a legal question. Um, so I just want to clarify that because I hear it said all the time that the city is suing the district and that's not really accurate about the nature of the legal matter pending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Siri. <laughs> well, Nick, in your conversations with the directors, regarding the system plan or in other dealings, do you, are you ever able to like bring up to, to, to them that due to the fact they wear many hats that it might behoove them to move in the direction of opening up the conversation and the vote of change of governance? Uh, just just throwing that out there. I know you probably don't have an answer. You don't have to go into detail. No. Just things you so I can say, honestly, but... I have never had that conversation yeah. with, with them. Um, they're aware that I think that the topic was brought up by the DAC and and I think the DAC did a great job when they communicated the goals of the DAC last time uh, not only was um, um, Ryan able to present those goals to the to the board so they're well aware I think you guys had five great goals and and governance and separation was one of those so as far as me directly I've had zero conversations I would have that conversation probably with Gary unless asked by um, the board for, for my input or opinion. And realizing that our uh, board liaison is Commissioner Savez, I assume that that would come from him. So if he asks, I would be open and honest with him um, what we think is the best path forward and why. And basically the why is because I think we can serve the district better by having local district controls is what I'm hearing from the community. So it's not what Don, uh, Dominic wants or anyone else, it's what the community wants. And it's our job to kind of due to our best ability to execute that. Um, are there any more questions? I'd like to uh, ask a, a few questions, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, I was part of the uh, the process for, well, I have a few statements and I have a few questions. Um, I was part of the process for the system plan. In fact, I met with staff to help kind of formulate um, the system plan and, and give them some ideas of, of the project process I'm going through now. Um, I, one, Dominic, if you know, I'd like to, and I, I think you just answered it, I'd like to know why it was pulled. And I did I did read somewhere that staff got ahead, um, and, I, and I forgot what email that was um, of the process. Um, I If that is the case, again, I don't want to spread misinformation. I disagree with that. Um, I was part of the process and also, uh, the, the county's purchasing and was part of the process. So that must mean that it, it, I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to say, I don't want to say that because that's, that's not nice. But, um, so the question I have is, uh, a system plan is a project. It is a budget that's being asked to be a, approved. Um, or a contract that's asked to be approved from a budget that was already approved. And it's been pulled and it's now in a policy session. A contract is not a policy. So how can the uh, Board of County Commissioners or uh, I'm sorry, our Board of Directors put it into a policy session where there's no public comment? Is that, is that an actual okay thing to do? 
because I I'm finding that to be very um, outside of it's a little squishy to me because we would know in all the agencies I work for six of them we have never done that that would be a no no so I'm I'm curious if that is an actual okay thing to do to have a contract brought up in a policy session with no public comment. <laughs> do you want to answer? You don't have to answer. And this is something I'd like to have. Uh, yeah. You don't have to answer. If you feel comfortable answering, that would be great. That's pretty on the spot. No, it's okay. Um, you know, for the board to discuss anything, they need to do it in a public session. And so they use the quality session as that method to have that public conversation regarding something they have questions about. They use it in many, many ways, you know, to receive additional facts from staff or talk about the process. You know, this wouldn't be, in this circumstance, a proper subject of conversation for an executive session where we would have a conversation about things that are you know, limited topics. So to have that frank conversation amongst board members in a way that's public, you know, so you can see what the conversation is, you know, review it, they have to do it in a policy session. You know, we have conversations and issues session, which is kind of the same thing. The, the board typically doesn't allow public comment because they are they have their own questions. They want to receive those answers from staff in a way that all five of them are, are present and participating in a conversation. So that's why we use a policy session. To so it might be questions. terminology of, of the session. Yeah, policy we session. Is, session in my agency. And... It's very much the same thing. as it's, it's a work session. We just have the one term on our, on our, on our calendar. So, okay. so okay. instead of scheduling multiple work sessions, policy sessions to draw the distinction, it's the same thing. So it's, uh, you know, policy sessions can be very broad as how the board uses that terminology. So it'd be like your work session for the, their agencies. They're going to have that conversation, you know, ask their questions, get, a, get them answered or provide uh, some additional uh, questions that need to be followed up on or information that they may need to come back and, and complete their decision on this. Because normally uh, a contract would go through the process it would then get on the board's agenda for the consent agenda typically, and there would be a, a presentation at issues, which is the review of the things the board being that public following you know, that next Thursday. And this is a conversation that was likely to take a little more time than would be handled in the you know, three to five minutes for each matter at issue sessions that schedule a policy session. They can go more in depth. Okay. And that's really the long and the short of it. Okay, thank you. That that explains it more because I've been struggling over policy session. I mean, every agency has their little nuances. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. And then uh, I think that was all the questions I had. Um, can we move on to the last thing? And then Jeff, I promise you can do your, your, uh, no. Yes. I Katie. just, I just want to highlight something from performance Clackamas um, on this topic. It says by 2024, county policies and decisions, service delivery and board deliberations will be equitable, inclusive, and transparent. So that is really what we are asking for with this information is really to have that open to the community so that we can really have answers as to what's going on. So that if there's any further delay in this process, our community knows what's going on and has that opportunity to provide feedback. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go, ahead, go ahead. To add to, just to answer that question, even a policy session may not be open to the public. Mm -hmm. Board meetings always are. Yeah. And there's always a public comment sec section of that on that agenda and encourage people to come forward if that's a the time they want to uh, contribute to that conversation. Thank you. I just while we have Jeff here uh, uh, in the area of changes, status, and updates, we have Concord, and I have a question about Concord. So should I ask him, or uh, are we like, off that section? Because th you said we're doing that section now. Uh, we're, yeah, we're on the system plan. We just did Concord, but if you want to go ahead, Grover, if you want to. Right. Ask well, him. it had to do with. Sorry, the, Jeff, we're going to ask you lots of questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it has to do with that the go ahead for the permit. Uh, so the library, and I have not heard any updates on, on the status of the land purchase for the library. So Clackamas County is, uh, has expressed interest and has agreement from the library. I mean, the, the NCPRD, they're talking to each other. But anyway, they agree that they will be selling the land. And we haven't heard any, I haven't heard anything new about that in, in yeah. a long time. Yeah, no, I'm happy to answer questions regarding that because the two projects are linked to the same contractor. Uh, amendments for those contracts are, going, are moving forward at this time. 
we had done an inter intergovernmental, intergovernmental agreement between the county and um, NCPRD regarding that land purchase, just to kind of get in a real rough form. What we're doing is a envelope condominium plat, or basically a sort of a cube of space on this parcel that will be sold to the county for the library. That can't start until we have some of the construction started and we know how to survey that properly. Mm -hmm. So we have this IGA in place that creates sort of the fundamentals of what the future agreement will be and how we're going to transfer the property. And so that's kind of queued up to move forward when the time is right. We need, because of the the uh, the appeal, slow down the construction process a little bit. So as we get to that point, we'll move forward with that agreement as well. Nothing's okay. changed, just need to wait for the right time to do it. Okay, thank yeah. you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> and any other questions on the system plan? Oh, oh go ahead, Jeanette. Yeah, thank you. Um, this might be splitting hairs. Going back to the the contract and the procurement. Um, so the policy session is November twenty first. Um, if there's any uh, hiccups with the procurement timeline, which is generally state law that needs to be followed, um, that would make waiting until the 21st or later an issue with getting this moving forward? I mean, is that something we can ask them to ask our board of directors to move it forward on their own agendas to just try to be sensitive that we don't wanna to have to go through procurement a second time and, and, and if that's too much in the weeds, we can take that question offline. Yeah. I I don't have an answer for you on that. I'd have to look into that. So um, I can I can do that and get back to you. Okay, I thank you. Thank um, you. The <laughs> second thing I'm hoping to say, um, and it, it is a little bit me coming back to this again, I became very interested in uh, serving on the DAC when I learned about the Justice Park property, which the, the last deed transfer on that was in 1993. I was still in high school it's a property that's still not a park. Um, so thinking of, you know, land use and all of these important steps that are being done are, are need to be done deliberately and carefully. However, at, at some point, you know, the lack of action looks really bad. Um, and so it being older than my high school graduation date is, it's a little bit of a bummer. Um, so I just, I really want to emphasize that my kiddo is in first grade now, you know, when we come and visit, um, you know, Jennings or Concord or Milwaukee Bay, however the chips fall, they're going to be a little bit older. That time only works in one direction. And so getting, getting um, both services and parks to the community is, uh, if, if we seem like we're poking at you, it's because time is Time has not been on our side and, and that's the shadow that we're under. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Thank you, Jeanette. Um, yeah, I'm I'm feeling frustration with the constant delays that since I've moved here, I just feel that there's so many delays. Everything's delayed, everything's delayed. And I think uh, a lot of us are getting really frustrated with that and we wanna find a way to support you all and moving forward and cutting out some of these delays. Um, and then now the next item I'd like to go over with, yes. Oh, uh, just, just, I, yes. I'll, I'll say it almost every Please other meeting. The, the, do I, it. I already said governance, but if, if, the, if the staff will openly admit that they're in maintenance mode because there's not enough funding, we have to consider the fact we have to bring in more money. Just throwing yeah. it out there where I stand on that issue, I'm done. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Note that. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, the director position. Yeah. Would you, do you mind giving us an overview? Is that was that going to be on the list? I can I can I can tell you what I know, which is I think we just need to know. So um, I think it's out there. Mike um, is as as of Monday at six o'clock will no longer be the director of NCPRD. Um, or say anything else. I just want to thank Mike for. Um, everything he's done in my short time getting to work with him, I've learned a lot. I think he's put together um, a great team. My coworkers that I get to work with um, are by far 
the most professional group that I've ever worked with in my life. And we're not so professional that we're stuffy because we have a good time at the same time, but uh, it's that perfect balance where we do, where we can do our mission and our business side of it. So uh, we get done with the mission is, but we also know there's a business component to being able to execute those things. Um, but uh, Mike was a tremendous asset to, to the district in his time. Uh, I've met with Mike a couple of times. Um, he's, he's done everything to update me as possible. Gary asked me um, uh, late last week um, if I would be willing to step in as interim director. And I said that I would be. Uh, I met with Gary this afternoon and uh, we're gonna continue to meet uh, to tackle and address exactly what we're talking about in this meeting. I think he has the same concern and feels the same frustration that the members of this uh, organization feel too. So it's it's my job to kind of keep the train running and, and I'm very confident in that. Not because I have all the answers, but because I know people out there have all the answers and I can be the one that gives the message to everybody else that we're going in the right direction. So uh, there might be a few hiccups, so it's it's not intentional. So um, just be uh, a little sensitive and, and whatnot. Um, I would say, honestly, we're all very um, glad that we got to work with Mike and wish him nothing but the best. Uh, Mike has been, <laughs> I met with him uh, twice over the last four days. He's been an absolute champion. Um, uh, not only am I losing a coworker, uh, but I also consider Mike a friend. So uh, I wish him nothing but the best. Uh, are there questions for this on this subject? I think does anybody have questions on this? <laughs> no, I don't have any questions right now. Okay. It, it, I mean, unless you can shed some light on the some of the detailed circumstances. Of the... So um, what I I don't have any details. Uh, what I met with Gary this afternoon, he wasn't able to be here tonight. He said, please just direct everyone to either email me or give me a call. I'm not trying to not give you an answer, but uh, I think I basically I laid out all my cards on the table. What I know um, it was it was a, a Gary's decision. He he, uh, you know, uh, is probably the proper one to answer that stuff. So, will, will Gary be available to the BAC as a convening board to at some point here in the near future? I, I would assume somewhere? so. He he had another engagement tonight because I, I was hoping he would come to field those questions. So it, it kind of would take me out of the line of fire. Um, um, and I'll use the excuse I technically don't start till till two days. So <laughs> um, I gotta use that. I'm gonna use that tonight. So yeah, but, well, yeah, um, but uh, <laughs> but no, yeah. Gary said. Um, you know, reach out to him. Uh, I'm going to reach out to Mike again because uh, the great thing about Mike is he still cares about everything that's led up the system plan, the governance question, all that. He's more than willing to kind of let me know where we where we are in the, each one of those processes because he and I split kind of responsibilities as far as uh, who we supervise. So um, I was involved with him on kind of a surface level, and now he's trying to give me the deeper layer layers. Um, along with referring me to what staff member to ask. And we have all this stuff uh, that I'll be relying on as far as staff and documentations. I, just to follow up on, I guess, my sort of question about it, 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 I think it's important. I know Gary's available to any of us, probably in the district to send them an email and get answered. But I think in a public forum, this certainly uh, deserves some somebody to be addressed. So looking forward to hopefully seeing him maybe in our next meeting. Are you asking me to ask him to be at the next DAC? Uh, sure. So, okay. I, love that. Yeah. I, I will ask yeah. him then. So uh, I will let him know that the DAC would request yeah. his presence at the next meeting. Uh, Kenny, did you have something? Well, actually, would that be maybe the next meeting? Is it going to be? Yeah. So I don't know. Um, one of the things at the NCPR Board of Directors meeting uh, uh, that we had last time, it was thought that the DAC meeting could combine with the Board of Directors meeting. Also, it was thought of that there might be some type of potluck or food that could be provided because the reality is that uh, I think relationships and communication are something that we can never have strong enough. And I think that provide a platform for us, at least a, a jumping off point, if you will, because um, I can feel some frustration in this room. And I think uh, we all have the same goal. Uh, we might have different ideas how to get there. But I think if we can all get in the same room, we're intelligent enough, we can we can either agree to disagree or, or uh just kind of eliminate some of the questions that are floating out there that seem to have be half truths or full truths or whatever they might be. So um, I reminded Ryan before this meeting that 
uh, that was on the table still. So if that's something that we want to move forward with NCPRD, we wouldn't have a potluck. We would have a catered because of some county rules about, you know, bringing stuff in, but we can make it whatever you guys want it to be. So um, I'll just, I'll just look for some direction from, from you guys on, on execution of that. So. And to clarify that was um, in response to goal four, five, I think it's goal four, um, closer communication, three-way communication, and that was brought up by uh, Chair Smith. And um, so in that in that presentation, that quarterly presentation, so there was an opening um, so that we can start to create more conversation with the uh, board of directors as well. We've done, we're doing a great job. I, I'm, we're trying to do a great job with staff. And I think we are as a, a board or an advisor, I, I have to, I have to deal with boards, commissions, councils. So as a DAC, um, I think we're making leaps and bounds with our relationship with the district. And now the missing piece is the uh, board of directors. So that was one of the reasons, one of the ideas we needed to create these relationships. So good. are you good, Joel? Do you have any? No, that's fine. I mean, following that logic, assuming we can do a joint meeting, you know, whatever, jello salads with standing and everything. <laughs> no, no. That is a quarterly. So that would be, because that was September, correct? I'm trying to win this. So the yeah. tech, in theory would be next month, correct? Correct. Yeah. Right. Um, yes. We have a, on your phone, there's an invite for it. Yes. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that was out there. Yep. Uh, Jeanette and then Mark. Um, I have a couple of questions. I'm just going to kind of throw them out there. Um, I'm, I feel confused about where the lines on the flow chart would be between our board of directors and the director of NCPRD. Um, I'm assuming that's not a represented position. It's probably, it's management, it's non-union. Um, you know, so it's, I theorize at will, um, but I just want to get a better understanding of how that, how that works. Um, the next question I have is, does NCPRD have a continuity of operations plan, um, both for big staffing changes or for emergency management purposes? Um, and then the third was um, back to Joel's question about public um, notification, if there was a press release or um, any other notification planned around this staffing change. Thank you. Okay. so. Question number one, um, I can let you know that uh, in regards to the director of NCPRD and I guess the, the chain of commands, so the, the director works for the county administrator, which would be Gary Schmidt, and then Gary Schmidt works for the board of directors. So that's how kind of that flow, flow chart goes. Now, remind me question two. <laughs> um, can only... con continuity of operations. Oh, I, I'm, sure. I'm Almost worried like about staff. Plan. This is, is a you're... big change. Okay. You're absolutely right. So. Uh, those are those are things we talk about um, informally amongst ourselves. We don't have anything formalized. Uh, I think in the back of everyone's head, uh, you start to try to figure that out because the ultimate goal is that NCPRD is still running strong 100 years from now when we're long gone. So our goal is to make sure not only that that we do our job, but we're also grooming those within the walls and 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 looking for the best talent to join our team. So. Uh, that, that's kind of our informal succession plan, if you had to ask and put me on the spot right now. And question three was? Um, if there was a, a planned public notification about the staff change and what that would look that, like. I would direct that to, to Gary since uh, uh, the director works for Gary. I'm not sure what his plan is. I can tell you that an email was sent out uh, to Gary on um, getting my date, I think it was Thursday, just to notify staff about the change. So um, I th that's as far as I know that it, it is gone. As far as through his office, the reality is we all live in a, a small world. We, um, a handful of us were at a, a Parks and Rec conference these last few days, uh, including the, your director and, you know, chair, uh, chair uh, things get around. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a realist as far as that goes, but yeah. I, I would have to ask Gary if there's going to be something official um, and as far as a public um, statement out there. So I can find that out for you. <clears throat> uh, Mark. Thank you, Jeanette. Yeah, I, I had the opportunity to uh, have some email dialogue back and forth with Gary 
So uh, with his understanding that this is from the position of a DAC member, not just somebody out in the public. So I took his responses to be possible to share publicly. Okay. So um, I asked him four questions and I'm just going to read them so that you get it right. Thank you. Uh, what issues resulted in Michael Bork's dismissal last Friday? Uh, his response is, this is a confidential personnel matter. When will the interim director be appointed? Who is that person? The current NCPRD directory deputy director will temporarily lead the operations of the district. His name is Dominic. Dominic, I will take a greater role in the strategic leadership of the district. Uh, what is the plan for Michael's permanent replacement? There will be a recruitment for a permanent NCPR director. Uh, and I would add no dates or time. Uh, number four, what effect will Michael's dismissal have on the pending BCC approval of the systems plan consultant agreement with design workshop? The answer is no impact. The systems plan will be before the board on the group. I followed up with a question asking, can we expect you to attend the AC meetings in the interim? His response was likely. Not this week, though. Thank you. Anything else, Mark? No, that's it. Okay. I would again like to highlight some things from Performance Clackamas that I think are very relevant to this conversation regarding building trust through good government. By July 1st, 2022, the county's budget will be structurally sound, sustainable, and 100% tied to results. This is relevant because of the massive costs associated with director, or, you know, with recruitment for a director position. We know this is something that's hard to find. There are only a certain number of candidates who are going to be qualified for that type of position. What is the cost for the taxpayer now that they've made this decision? And again, you know, to that second point that I read earlier from Performance Clackamas or the board of our directors, by 2024, county policies and decisions, service delivery, and board deliberations will be equitable, inclusive, and transparent. I have to say, as a DAC member, Director Bork absolutely was working with us and was listening to the community and made that his priority. So for the board of directors to make this decision and advise Gary Schmidt in this way, as I assume they do, as is their role, it just shows complete disregard for any of the community's interests and the work that he had done. So I think this really speaks to that need for change in governance because one of those commissioners lives within NCPRD. How are they speaking to the needs of this community right now? It just, it isn't seeming to be really representing our community in the way that we need it. And I just want to highlight that today at this meeting, knowing this is in a public forum, because those words need to be spoken. Thank you, Director Bork. I know you're not here today, but I do appreciate the work that you did for this district. Are there any other comments from the DAC members? Um, all right, so uh, to wrap this up, um, did you have any other things you needed to say, Dominic? Or... No, the only thing I'll just say is I think I, I said this when I talked to individuals since I started. My door's always open. Uh, I can give you all my emails. Grover and I, for, we've fallen off, but for a while we were, we were somewhat regular. But, uh, and, you know, I always told him if I didn't have the answer, I'd try to find out. Uh, he provided a little education uh, historically for me. So, um, I would like to continue the the work that Mike has done. I agree with you that um, he's he's gotten the ship steered in the correct direction. And my job right now is to kind of keep it going in that direction and making sure that we're listening to the public and responding to their their inquiries. So, okay, thank you. Um, to wrap this up, and then thank you, Jeff. We'll, yeah. um, so uh, I I I have to admit that. Uh, when I found out Mike was let go, um, I saw it as another delay, um, nonstop delays. The delays are getting really old. Um, this delay is uh, a burden on our tax base, on our budget. Um, there are, I'm sure, severances, and I'm sure there are, uh, there, you're losing institutional knowledge, even though it's two years, um, and you're going out for recruitment. You're putting more pressure on additional staff. This is not the way to run a district, a department, or be stewards of our community. 
and I'm 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 highly frustrated. Mike, I had no Mike was moving things forward. I'm sure there are reasons, and and that's fine, and that's the purview of the uh, county administrator. But um, with the system plan being put off, with all all the details around library, and and just these constant interjections and last minute oh pull things from the agenda, it's getting really old. And it's showing that there's people out there that don't want to move us forward. And this group here, we are here, we're, we're passionate about parks, we're passionate about service, we're passionate about stewardship, we're passionate about the staff. And I am, this is just another little nail in that coffin. Um, and, and don't have to do this verbatim if you don't want to, but I am okay with you doing it. Um, this is just another nail of frustration. And this is another reason why we need a passionate board to govern our own district and the, the finite resources we have. This is another resource sink. And I'm also really concerned about the system plan being postponed because no, by the way, no reason, real reason has been given. And working in system planning, that adds cost. They can come back and say, well, we've already reprioritized the consultants. Now it's going to be more cost. This is always cost. We're adding costs to your pockets. And, and we we do not, we cannot hemorrhage this much, constantly hemorrhage these resources. So I to say the least, I'm very frustrated. And if nobody in this room, I just want to put it out there. I'm very frustrated. So in the next coming months, we, I, I want to see action and I want to see us moving forward and I want to see um, more communication and I want to see, I really would love to see some transparency from the Board of County Commissioners. I would love to see not quarterly meetings. Um, that's why we need our own board. Quarterly meetings is inefficient and it's a waste of taxpayer money. We are steward for my community, for the, your, your community you work for, your stewards of these people and their funding. This is an, to you, Dominic. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, good. So um, I would love that message to get out. Now, it, um, I'm gonna move on to the next uh, item on the uh, agenda, which was, and uh, this was brought up by uh, director, director, I'm sorry, I keep saying board of Com county commissioners and the board of directors, um, clarification on bylaws and appointment process is uh, Commissioner Savas here. Okay, we, uh, we received, um, and I'll be honest, Grover, we talked, I've talked to a, a couple of you trying to figure out what this is. Um, <laughs> and there was, uh, we did do some email digging. Um, and there was really no uh, clarification of what this is since Commissioner Savas isn't here. Um, do you know yeah. what, what it's for? Yeah, I can speak to that. I think what this is concerning is the question came up regarding the appointment of, of members of the DAC from the city of Milwaukee. And, and I think that there's probably just sounds like a, a minor oversight that, you know, the way the uh, work is that all the different sub areas have uh, nominate their members, then that, that goes through PGA, that then goes to the board of directors after the these people are selected for final you know approval. Uh, and so in the city of Milwaukee, they you know nominate their members, and then that would go to the board of the board of commissioners as, as the board of directors to um, to officially appoint those individuals to the to the uh, DAC. I think just the question came up. Uh, I know the example was, uh, you know, Mayor Beatty. That uh, was was that done? And I think that from the county admin staff digging, I didn't see that. If that has happened, I mean, that then it's a non-issue. <laughs> if it hasn't happened, it's a simple matter of uh, just getting minutes from the city as to when uh, Mayor Beatty was nominated to serve in the DAC. We'll present that to uh, to the board at an issues presentation, and it's a real simple matter. Take care of that. Okay, so this was this was just that's, questioning. Yeah, just to make sure we, we've done it properly. The, the process. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Okay, that's any problems have you know that have come from this, but uh, that was the issue that uh, that came up, as I understand it. And so, looking at the bylaws, is a pretty simple procedure. 
just making sure that we have that. I'm sure we can easily get that information from the city and get this in front of the board and get that taken care of. Okay, and that would be something that your office would do or if it, yeah, I'm happy to. If it comes to me, I'll take care of it. Okay. Um, otherwise, in, in the future, it's just a matter of uh, if membership changes from the city under the, by, under the bylaws. Eventually, that needs to go before the board, and that that nomination can either come to NCPRD staff or myself or a member of our office or sent to the clerk of the board who puts that agenda together. If any way you do it, we'll make sure it happens. Okay. Are there any questions? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Lisa, Mayor Beatty. Yeah, I didn't understand. Um, so I will say the other Milwaukee rep who couldn't be here tonight, Al Ali Feuerstein, um, was actually even appointed more recently than me. Um, so I don't know if this also applies to her appointment as well. Um, I was appointed in the beginning of every year, the council sits down and we have a spreadsheet of all the various committees that we need people to serve on. And I, so my appointment came out of that process that we did, I think at the first meeting in January. Um, so I guess if you will let me know, and we don't have to belabor that tonight, but if you will let me know offline what you need from the city of Milwaukee by way of nomination, there's, there's, I mean, it's probably that um, meeting record uh, that is, you know, sort of the documentation. I'm sure it's in your minutes. And uh, yeah, if we just have the dates, we can even pull the minutes off your website and get that taken care of. Yes, for both of them. It sounds like early 2023 for Mayor Beatty's and more recently for uh, Allie's. Yeah, so. Allie was appointed in maybe May or June. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mine would have been January. Yeah. Great. Thank you, uh, Mayor Beatty. Uh, Jeanette. Uh, thank you. Um, so this raises a red flag for me, bluntly. Um, because the the I understand the advisories boards and commissions the ABCs um, you know have within the county um, you know they have their way of running things and there's individual boards that have like ours DAC um, that has bylaws. Um, my recollection is that the leadership and equity and inclusion council leadic um, had some nominations for their particular advisory group that the Board of County Commissioners um, had concerns about and delayed seating those uh, community members who were volunteering their time. Um, and then some months later, uh, the Board of County Commissioners during budget season brings up that they, you know, could we just not fund this particular function within the county? Um, Am I jumping to conclusions? I would love to be reassured that that this line of questioning about um, procedure is not um, is not auspicious of of other things coming down the line. But it raises a red flag for me. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. I appreciate that comment. Um, you made a really great point, delay. That seems to be our theme lately. Um, <clears throat> all right, um, is there any other questions? Well, can I, so just to yes, clarify sir. this, so this is just a housekeeping issue. That's as I understand it, yeah. And so it's placed on our agenda for 15 minutes, could have been solved with an email yeah. prior to a meeting. But I mean, that's general, okay. I just wanna make sure we're clear on that, that that's all, okay. I guess so. Um, so in the future, uh, we're over. Yes. Okay. No, no, to your future. Uh, no, because I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up and. Okay. Good. So um, what I miss is, and I don't know what y'all are doing now, but is actually having a meeting where the two of you and every anyway you work on the agenda together, so the people who are there can talk about it, mm -hmm. and and as opposed to just. I want this to go on there and that to go on there. So I appreciate that. And I hope that returns because I was quite disappointed when it was gone. Yeah, actually, um, uh, Katie and I are working on a new process and um, going to 
and we'll be talking to you, Dominic, um, about changing this because we, we've had quite a few conversations about this item and um, just a lot of the things that are going on and we're gonna need to be have some more involvement as a team. And, and to clarify this item, um, this was added um, by a um, commissioner's office's office had emailed and asked if we could add this item and more clarification should have been sought. But in the interest of, you know, respect and, you know, trusting that that was a meaningful item to add to our agenda, we agreed to add it. So that is the background of that agenda item. Uh, Joe, I just want to quickly echo exactly what Grover said. And going back to even when I was vice chair with you, the they were great discussions. They were Zoom. They were less than an hour. Director, and it's very, I think it's very appropriate for this board to have some input on yeah. setting our own agenda rather than just rubber stamping an email that says it's a draft. Yeah, and and we uh, we have been doing it via email and that is going to be a request to change. And and we'll talk with you, Dominic. And, sure. and I'm available during hours, during off hours, whenever. So uh, well, not, I, I think it's balance, not off hours. <laughs> yeah, so I had another thing. And thank you for putting that part in there. So what I appreciate was I asked, I called you and asked yep. you why I was on there and we talked and I love the conversation we had on there because for me, I've been an advocate all along that we all read this and, and our purpose statement that is right here is where we need to keep focusing, keep focusing. And it's uh, so it's short enough. I want to read it. It's just had one. Okay. The purpose of the DAC is to advise the board of directors on the acquisition, design, planning, and development of parks, uh, <clears throat> recreation facilities uh, within the district and advise the board of directors on programs, maintenance, and operations to meet the board of directors once a year. And also to talk about what gets published as far as the summary of what we've done. That is all with the board. And when you asked about the org chart, whoever asked that, it the org chart is, our relationship is with the board of directors. We have a relationship with NCPRD as well, but it is to be advising them. And our job here is to get what we need to be able to meaningfully communicate, be part of, et cetera, as opposed to um, just waiting to see what comes out and like it or not like it. It is in the in the initiation part of it to advise. So that's the part I want to clarify. And I'm glad we got to say that and I'm done on that. But and I appreciate that, Grover. Um I'm gonna ask for I, I, I want to add on to that, but I want to make sure everybody else has had an opportunity. Is everybody good? Okay, and I know we're running out of time. Um I'm gonna speed some things up here a little bit. Um <clears throat> thank you, uh Jeff. Um appreciate you coming. Uh, in the future, there's, excuse me, uh, we, we are going to have a slight change. Um, if things come on to the agenda or uh, we did not get the PDF form, uh, I've searched for it, maybe we did. Uh, um, but in the future, we're going to, re I, I'm going to require either an email explaining why an item is brought onto uh, the agenda or a memo, um, except for things that are rolling agenda items such as uh, the the uh, NCPRD foundation discussion. That's just a list. There's not actually going to be a discussion about it. It's just a list of materials for us to look at. Um, that's in your packet. Um, I just covered that. Is that okay? Yeah. I, down the road, I have contacts that set up foundations and did bylaws. Um, and if you want, I can link, link whoever's involved in that. So. And that's just, that's our rolling agenda. So anything on a rolling agenda, we're not going to require that um, unless it's something very new. Um, so that's uh, something that we will implement in future items. Jeff, we appreciate you being here. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, okay. you. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> uh, do we want to take, we have 15 minutes left. Um, again, thank you all for being open with moving things around a little bit. Do you want to give a quick overview? I think you're just giving an update on like what we're going to do with budget prep, right? So I know uh, budget is always a big concern. I think this this organization uh, had, has always had questions. So I invited uh, uh, our finance uh, specialist here tonight, Callie, if she could come forward. I want her to walk through where we are because we're just at the, the, the front end of budget prep. A uh, little background, Callie and I work together as supervisor. We meet weekly 
uh, as a uh, finance team and her and I meet monthly uh, individually to talk about finance of the district. But I'll hand it over to her. She can walk you through our next steps in preparing next year's budget and answer a few questions for you guys. Hi, I'm Callie. Is this on? I think you're good. Okay. I'm Callie Gantner. I'm the financial analyst with NCPRD. And um, so, like Dominic said, we started our budget process for 2425. Um, we've uh, drafted our initial calendar and included on that monthly updates with you all. So, um, next month, we plan to have sort of like an informational packet for you guys on how we look at the budget, how we look at each piece, um, and how we put it together, big picture. Um, the first step also is the managers have been looking at year-end projections, and so that helps us determine our beginning fund balance, and then that gives us how much money we can work with for um, the next fiscal year. Um, so also to talk about is last budget cycle, we created a budget proposal form online and that had a pretty good turnout. Um, the number one item we got off of that was paving Alta, the path to Altamont Park, which we just finished last month. So um, we're hoping to hear from you all again. The form is out there um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a project. It could be a special event or an activity or something. We uh, want to hear about it all. And we look at them all, read them, and we um, entertain each one. So um, that link was also in the DAC packet, and it's on the NCPRD website. Um, so, and the due date for that is December 31st. Um, and lastly, we are recruiting for two open budget committee positions. So if you know anybody, spread the word, or if you're interested, the only requirement is that you're within NCPRD boundaries. Oh, I have any questions? Go ahead. I don't know who for, but <clears throat> on that topic, it is a topic that I near and dear to me. I know that Wes has reorganized. It's another district within, okay, has reorganized theirs and their advisory committee, whatever they call it, that it, they actually have their members participate on that planning committee as opposed to just people who show up for uh, how long do they meet? Uh, three weeks, two weeks, they, they, they're not ongoingly involved. And I don't want to have that conversation now, but I want to use this as an opportunity to look at how we, on a future agenda item, could talk about the benefit of that, because then we're involved in our budget as opposed to some folks who come in and read what was there and have a two days until they have to have it be approved and it moves on more or less the way it is. Yeah, so essentially maybe a budget committee, like a subcommittee. Well, actually to rewrite and have us take over or be the majority on the budget committee. So it'd be as a subcommittee of this group, I'd be more than happy to be on that as a subcommittee member because we're directly in, connected to where we're headed, what we want yeah. to accomplish, what our goals are, as opposed to a few wonderful volunteers, community members who show up and don't have that same connection. Okay, um, uh, Grover, I'm going to, uh, uh, when we meet with the, this guy here, Dominic, <laughs> um, we'll just kind of start chatting about what that okay, looks like. Yeah, I'm going to put that on my, my notes. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Nothing. Just, just oh, to continue yeah, off that, I want, I want to say the same thing. If we want to move towards an independent district, or we're hoping to, or that's what the community is whispering in everyone's ear as I'm sitting here right now. Now, <laughs> pretending like we're kind of that might be a good step forward, you know, bringing in the financial or aspect. Participating. Participate. Yeah. Just, just pretend like the machine is running until it actually is running. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Make it till you make it. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. And make sure we got that. And I'd just like to add, I, I see where you're going. In the interim, we do have two spots. Mm -hmm. I know how long processes seem to take so um it's a good start if someone wants to or you know someone please refer them because we'd like to get those things <laughs> filled as soon as possible <laughs> so um but and one last thing this is kind of um I, would, I wasn't sure if i was going to bring this up tonight or at the combo board but things like this i don't think can wait i just wanted to to communicate with the dac um our finance committee uh received two awards from the GFOA, uh, Government Finance Officer Association. Uh, these came out on the 25th. 
So I printed them. And for me, it does two things. First, I get to work with the lovely team uh, since the day I started here. But on a, even a bigger scale, I want this to reassure the community that not only do we do good work, but we're doing top line work. And it's been checked and double checked by the highest level uh, in the country here. So I'm just going to pass these around. But I think that's important information to know because we often get we often don't hear what we're doing right. It's what we hear what we're, what's not uh, going in the right direction. So um, Callie here, along with Lydia here, also, and then um, we just hired a new accounting one person that will allow them to do even more because uh, uh, they are definitely worked uh, very much. So uh, we just brought on our, our third member of the finance team last week. So. Um, I just can't applaud both of them enough, and uh, I hope that reassures you all on this committee and in, in our district that um, we do things right, um, and we do it very well. So, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now you're still on the <laughs> um, Okay, so we'll move on to public comment. Uh, so have we received any public comment? That's good. We have not received any public comment. <laughs> okay. Is there anybody, nobody public comment on Okay. Um, okay, well, we'll close the public comment. Thank you. Uh, and again, you guys, uh, we're, wow, we have seven minutes. Right. Everything's a little over, but let's keep moving. Um, I'd like to open the floor to DAC member reports. I know Joel always has something good, um, but I'm not going to put you on the spot yet. I can, I can go. Okay, go for it. Uh, February 3, I hope somebody has called NCPRD uh, regarding Pfeiffer Park. There's a hole near the north side football goalpost that is covered, but two children fell in. Jesus. It is full of water. <laughs> it is not sealed. There's a cover that is not sealed. The community member has requested a small fence or something to secure it closed. And I... I encourage them to contact NCPRD directly, but just wanted to reiterate that that is a thing. Center of contact. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Cones up. Um, uh, anybody on Zoom? Lisa or, or uh, Jeanette? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm. I'm also in sub area three, um, and uh, pretty pretty much we're chugging along. A lot of the folks who are excited about Justice Park property and parks in our sub area, busy lives, um, as do I. I wanted to say a big kudos. Um, I needed to rent some space at the Milwaukee Center. Um, and the person who normally helps with that was out of the office unexpectedly longer. Um, and the folks there, um, were super awesome at helping me um, get that scheduled and taken care of so we could have our event. Um, and it didn't it didn't throw any wrenches in the works. Um, and I really want to compliment them uh, for being so professional and, and helpful and willing to stretch and, and, and get it done for us. So thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Uh, I'm going to finish the uh, Lisa. Yeah, I'll just throw out there that um... Uh, I, I brought it up many times before, but the second Saturday of every month, which is this Saturday, this month, uh, we work in Minthorn Springs to remove uh, invasive plants and pick up trash. Um, we're getting ready to plant uh, some more native plants in December, so we'll be clearing a particular area to prepare for planting this Saturday. Anybody who wants to come out and join us in Minthorn Springs, it's 9.30 to noon uh, and for those who don't know it, whether you come on Saturday or you come on another day, I definitely recommend going to Minthorn and visiting it because it's a really hidden gem in the center of Milwaukee. It's across behind the Planet Fitness at Milwaukee Marketplace. You park near the Planet Fitness and cross the street um, and walk back in there. And there, it's a great wetland and anybody who's a birder in particular, it's a great place for you. Um, Milwaukee has three parks that we're building out with um, ARPA money. 
Uh, and those are going to break ground this winter. The planning, they've gone through all their planning and everything, and um, they're going to break ground this winter and open in uh, fall of 2024. And I guess that's it for me. Thank you. you Siri. Very simple. There is a, apparently a sign that has fallen into the wetland on Arista and Boardman. Oh, that's... Yeah. <laughs> that, I wasn't being <laughs> There's a sign that has fallen into the wetland on the wrist and boardman. I don't know what the sign says, but someone said there's a sign that fell over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Is that it? That's it. Thank you. Joel, give uh, us good news. I will uh I will be uh as brief as possible. Um yeah, a lot of good news. Uh the Milwaukee uh, I'll pass on the, the comments too. Uh, I'm glad you had a good experience staff there but uh there are a couple of vacancies at the milwaukee community center advisory board uh we are not meeting on our usual friday because of veterans day we'll be meeting next week so if anyone's interested in any sub area uh to come check out a meeting uh, it would be next friday uh 9 30. uh there's two vacancies um there is still a great need for meals on wheels drivers uh so if you want to pass that information along to your people that would be greatly appreciated um it doesn't necessarily have to be a long-term commitment. They just need people to help with that program right now. Uh, drivers are desperately needed. Uh, I want to remind everyone too to share with everyone that in your areas, the, the emergency firewood program and the emergency energy assistance program can both be utilized through the Milwaukee Community Center right now. So if people need uh, you know, firewood for heating as we start to move into the nine months of rain, we're going to probably be in. Uh, or uh, or uh, emergency uh, energy assistance uh, in the in the uh, in, in funding uh, that can be applied for through uh, the Milwaukee Community Center. That's a county program, the energy assistance program. Um, the uh, other thing that wasn't in the uh, the district report uh, the uh, that I actually kind of learned about at our last meeting, the artisan gift shop, the gift shop that is run out of the Milwaukee Community Center, that is actually open to any. Uh, artists or people vendors in our area in our district uh, to potentially sell their items through there so if you have uh, local budding artists or crafts people or things like that that have an interest in maybe trying to get some exposure of their uh, their goods uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, get them involved and uh, uh, I think it's actually a free service though I'm not positive of that uh, just but contact the Milwaukee Community Center to, to find out about space availability. I was told, I think in the last day, Mark, I'm looking at you because you were there, so I'm hoping you back me up on this, uh, that there was space available uh, for, for new people. They, they seem to rotate through some, some, uh, some people there. Remind everyone also, the Veterans Day buffet is tomorrow at the Milwaukee Community Center because it will be closed on Friday. That's from 11.45 to 12.30. Uh, the world famous uh, Thanksgiving dinner uh, is happening the 19th. I know that's in our report, but there's two seatings. Uh, that's always a great event. Uh, it's a fundraiser for the Milwaukee Community Center's nutrition program and other programs they run through there. Please check that out. I know that information is in your packet. Uh, and the last thing I'll mention because it, it, it's gonna happen prior to our next meeting, but December 2nd is the uh, uh, world famous uh, winter celebration that also happens there. Uh, that's uh, again, December 2nd, 9.30 to noon. That is a free event, uh, very kid friendly and a great opportunity to check out the center. But all this information uh, is available on the uh, the website, I hope. And in your packets. And in your packets, I know. But please share this info with all your folks uh, because uh, it's a great opportunity to get people involved in uh, some of these great opportunities at the Milwaukee Community Center. Lots of world famous stuff there going on. It's a very, very famous uh, center. World uh, famous. Actually, uh, final thing: we are excited about the mural that the mural project that's happening on at the uh, the center as well. And uh, the last update was that that will be uh, completed in panels and then installed, hopefully sometime in the new year. I think they mentioned February maybe as the installation date for that. So when that's up, uh, hopefully we'll get some, at least some photos, but certainly come by and check it out because we're excited to see what happens with that, so. Maybe we should have a meeting there one time. That would be terrific, yeah. yeah. Uh, anybody else? Thank you, Joel. Anybody <laughs> else with an update? If not, I am going to turn it over to Dominic. So, um, I know earlier you heard me talk about uh, the staff I have the opportunity to work with. I just wanted to introduce our newest staff member that completes kind of our team. And 
to kind of put it in perspective, the way you can relate uh, uh, Heather's position. Uh, Heather did a great job, uh, is, is doing stuff on her own now, but we put that out and we were able to fulfill and hire her replacement. It started last Wednesday. She happens to be in the house tonight. Um, <laughs> I might bring her up real quick. Uh, her name's Kia. Uh, she has vast experience and is, I'm not gonna put any pressure, but I think there's things that we don't even know about <laughs> that she's gonna be doing, or, uh, uh, opening doors for us that will benefit everybody. So I wanted to give you, I, I didn't even give you a heads up. So uh, we're gonna see how you perform on the spot. But I just wanted to give you a few seconds to introduce yourself because um, these are uh, the group of people that we work for, so. Right, do I need to nope. turn this on? Okay. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for the warm welcome. I really appreciate it. I'm thrilled to be here. Parks and Recreation is one of my passions. I'm uh, I'm trained as a landscape architect. I'm actually licensed in the state of Oregon. I serve on the governor's um, board for the registration of landscape architects. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's very important. Um, I'm very excited to start this work and I'm thrilled to be part of the team. What Dominic was talking about in terms of the quality of this team is it's really true. And that's one of the reasons I took this job. I'm also really excited about the trajectory of the district. It's really exciting to, I feel like this is an emerging district in terms of the opportunities for the residents that live here. And the system plan, I think you all agree, and I do too, that it is the fundamental building block so that we know that we are equitably serving all residents in all ways that we need to in terms of parks and recreation. So I'm just really excited to hear your words tonight in support of the work of staff. Um, that's exciting as well to me. Um, I do have a background in redevelopment. I worked for the Portland Development Commission, now Prosper Portland for many years. And um, I also, uh, and I've worked at uh, Portland Parks and Recreation, overseeing planning, design, construction, as well as asset management, developed the first asset management program there, and also oversaw all of the operations and maintenance staff. Um, I served as interim director, so I know a little bit about uh, what Dominic is going through today. Um, it's exciting and rewarding, um, but terrifying <laughs> at times. And... Um, and then uh, I also uh, just really enjoy parks and recreation personally. It's it's part of my family's um, passion. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to serve you. I'm looking forward to it. And I also have an open door policy. Um, I know Dominic's really your first stop, but um, whatever way he deems appropriate, um, I'm happy to interact with you and, uh, and serve all of you. Do you mind if I... Um... Thank you. Do you mind if I, uh, I'm, I just met Kia yesterday, yesterday, uh, Monday, Monday. Um, did, would you just tell about the foundation you're on? Oh, sure. That's another hat that I wear. This is very important. For um, us. so, <laughs> um, so actually I'm board chair right now for the Portland Parks Foundation. I will be stepping out of that position in January, um, and it will be in capable hands, but I will remain on the board. And I've been on the board for several years now and have been serving as board chair for a couple of years. And, um, and so the discussion about establishing a foundation is also very exciting. It's created a lot of opportunity within the Portland's park system. And um, the motto of the Portland Parks Foundation is we help people help parks. And, and so it's really about facilitating the work that the community wants. And it's a great way for the community to have a voice in addition to speaking directly to their parks and recreation provider. So, um, so I would encourage you to do that. And um, I can direct you to resources at the Portland Parks Foundation if you wanna to talk to some folks that are doing that work and know how to start that kind of conversation. That's terrific. Awesome. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I, thank you, thank you, thank you. I so loved those uh, sessions that you had about O'Brien Park. Oh, good. And those consultants and that, I mean, and to see what they did in other cities and to get the community input, I, I was blown away. I actually recommended to all these folks, sent out the links and 
that was, that was phenomenal. So thank you for that great work. And I hope we could, you know, I look forward to when we will uh, be putting that kind of stuff into the North Clackamas Mix and Rec Foundation. Great. I'm so thrilled that you were a part of that. Well, That's exciting. I loved it. Yeah, we brought in a uh, load fellows. And um, if you're not familiar with that program, you might want to just take a look online. But it really is um, nationally bringing in a brain trust of professionals um, that do all sorts of types of work in terms of bringing forward uh, a park project or a public space. And, um, and so there were some really stimulating, exciting conversations about um, the, the new approach to creating public spaces where everybody feels welcome and um, and I think people are using public spaces differently. So it it was um, a really, again, a very stimulating conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it was how they also facilitated the voices. I mean, that for me was both physical, people could go do things or they could actually, I mean, it, it was excellent. Good. Uh -huh. I'm thrilled you were part of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, well, welcome. Thank you. Look forward to working with you. Um, uh, any other DAC member reports? I know we're at four minutes over. Uh, district monthly report. Are there any questions on the district monthly report? Do you want to say anything? Oh, wait, you need to say something. No, uh, no. I, I think if you guys have any more questions, we, we kind of reviewed pretty much yeah. everything. Uh, uh, but if something pops up, uh, please sh shoot me an email. Um, um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if I don't have the answer, I'll let you know that I don't have the answer, but that I'm working on it. So you don't just think I'm leaving you on red and and, and, and without a response. So I just want to say what I've said in multiple meetings before. I so appreciate how this report has grown over the last two years and, and fleshed out and gives so much good, rich information. So I always enjoy reading it. And I actually... Other than it's in the packet, I actually would like to have it be posted on NCPRD because it really gives the community a place to easily see what's up. Pardon? One, on the, uh, just on that topic, and I have a meeting with a, a few people from Milwaukee about posting stuff and websites. So these are things that are in the hopper and that we're thinking about. So yeah, yeah. put that on the list. So thank you. You're good. Thanks. Okay. Um, are there any, do you mind? So are there any, is it okay if I just ask for a question? Yeah. Yeah. Are there any questions on the district monthly, monthly report? Thank you all for putting that together. I know it's not easy. It's a lot. So again, lots of appreciation. Um, I'm just going to go into future dates, uh, December agenda submission, no later than Wednesday, November 15th at uh, the 20, uh, 2023. Uh, Dominic, um, Katie and I would like to set up a meeting so that we can uh, create agendas together. <clears throat> Excuse me, finalization of agenda will be on the 27th, uh, Monday the 27th, and then our next TAC meeting will be tentatively Wednesday, December 13th, um, and, let, and then don't forget the November 21st is the policy session, so policy is kind of sounds like work session too, with uh, the Board of Cal County Commissioners um, on the system plan. So if I, I plan to show up, if we can get a bunch of people to show up, that'd be great um, because it is open to public. It's just, yeah. And then um, it, the attendant of DAC meeting is because there may be a joint meeting with the uh, Board of County or the just the direct. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you have any, again, uh, at that meeting on the 13th, I will be presenting uh, the DAC report. Please email me, call me if there are things you want to talk about or want me to talk about. Um, I will put that together for that meeting. So if you're starting to think about that, please give me a call or you all have my number, I think, um, or email me on any subject that you would like me to touch on. Okay. Um, at this time, are there any other questions? Just couldn't note my gavel. Um, <clears throat> I I close it. Oh, Mark, go ahead. Um, that uh, Alex is going to be speaking at the Oak Grove. I hope Alex, if you want to do that, 
uh, speak at the uh, Oak Grove Community Council meeting in December regarding the trolley trail report that you put together. So I think that's pending some other uh, duties that she has that day, but I wanted everyone to know that she would be doing that. Okay, so thank you, Mark. Uh, I move to adjourn. I will second. Okay, well, okay, yeah, two votes, please. All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. You're amazing. We appreciate you.